gotta get something rolling for dinner tonight. Let's see. What can we do? I'll grab them out of there too. Yep. Get me a little tuna. I got me some pasta salad. I think I got everything together. We'll get this going. Yeah. Oh, well, hello there, friends and family. I didn't see you come on in again. Well, I guess you uh, went ahead and uh, got past Spooky and Speedy and Kid Crew. And as your luck would have it, Gracie and a little bit, they're fast asleep. You know, it is, you know, later in the afternoon. And since you snuck on in, just so happens we're putting a little bit of something together. Now, it's not much. But since you're here, I'm going to show you a few things. It's going to be a little bit of cooking. And a little bit informative, maybe. Could be a little bit of education. But as always, it's going to be entertaining. So hey, slip off your jackets and your shoes. Pull up a chair and dining room if you want. Some of you want to help. That's fine too. And let's show you what we got going on today in the little old country kitchen here in the deep south of Alabama. Okay? Well, as you all can see, I have it all laid out here in front of us, like I try to do normally. I've got all the ingredients I'm going to be using. Well, the ones I can think of right off the top of my head, since this ain't a recipe that I've written up, fine-tuned over the years. No. And I got me a stainless steel mixing bowl there. Got me a pot over here with about eight quarts of water in it. Yeah, I cheated. I read the box. Of course, that's what we're going to be doing. Sort of, kind of. Is cooking it up, or at least the pasta, by the box directions. Can't go wrong there. So what all do we have here? Just so happen we got two boxes of pasta. Now we're only going to be cooking up one. And the reason I got two of them out is because that's going to be part of the educational and hopefully informative part of this little cooking session we got going on. I've got me a can of old star kissed here. Tuna. I like to throw that in these here boxed pasta mixes. And yeah, I already know these are convenience foods. Yep. But, you know, I like to be prepared for, you know, natural disasters, job loss, when I ain't got no time. So, yeah, I keep some thrown in the pantry. If that ain't you, you don't do it. I got me some Duke's mayonnaise right over here. Sure do. Some parsley flakes there to add a little more flavor and color. Then I got some thyme. I enjoy thyme. Add a little more flavor. And in case I need it, because they do come with a seasoning package, got me a little extra salt and pepper here. That once I taste these, I might have to give them a few splashes. Who knows? Also got me, to add a little more color and flavor, a couple of green onions, or spring onions as I refer to. And got me some nice red ripe bell pepper that I had in the freezer. Now I'll be chopping this up just a little tad finer than what it is here. Got there defrosting. And got some frozen green peas right here. Defrosting. That we'll be throwing in the mix too. Has a lot of color and a lot of flavor. But back to our pastas here. Now the reason we got two of these it's because one of them is a little bit past, you might say, its best buy date. And the other one has yet to reach its best buy date. And we're going to be doing a comparison and looking to see if the one that's got a little age to it is still edible. So let me get you all set up. Let's start talking about box pasta mixes okay look you two no fighting or aggressive playing 
while I'm cooking, okay? Unacceptable. Do you hear me a little bit? And quit tearing up the rug. Because you want to. <laughs> you're a mess. And Gracie, you're teaching her bad habits. So chill, okay? Oh, kittens. One was enough. Two was a terror. Well, as you can see now, I got them both poured out. Well, there ain't much. Just some macaroni with uh, the veg in it. Of course, there's a spice pack, too. And over here, the same thing. Of course, you'll notice the macaroni is a little different. And it's spice pack. This one has the elbow macaroni right here. This one has the shell macaroni. Now, this is the craft pasta salad, homestyle macaroni. And it's got carrots, celery, and bell peppers in it. Boy, and look at that picture. Ooh, so creamy, so colorful. Looks wonderful, don't it? And here, we're going to look. You don't see any of those colorful pieces. Nope, see some pieces in there. But they look a little off color. You might say different shades of brown. Yeah. Now over here, in uh, Betty Crocker, suddenly pasta salad, ranch and bacon. Again, we got that wonderful, creamy, delicious looking salad. And it's got carrots and green peas and bacon bits. Albeit, they are imitation. Now, this is convenience food. Processed. Yeah, I know. But they both got macaroni. One's got the elbow, and one's got shells. They look fairly similar. Now, like I say, one of these has passed their best by. The other one has yet to reach it. Now, which one is that? Well, you may have already guessed. Yep, it's this one. The crab pasta salad, homestyle macaroni. You know, just when did that pass its best by? Let's take a look. I think it's on the bottom of the box here. Yep, it's right there. It says 19th of November. Oh, best when used by 19th of November 2014. So, yep, it's going on. Hmm, eight years old. Well, not quite. Seven years and three months, considering this is March 2022. Yep, it's vintage. <laughs> I don't even think they make these anymore. And you can sort of see that when you're looking at the, what was, the dehydrated veg in this. Okay? It's still in there, but it does sort of kind of look a little bit brown. Now the bag's not all poofy. And that's an important thing to understand when you're considering whether you can still consume something. Well, past its best buy use date. Now this one, you can still see. Carrot pieces have a little bit of color to them. Green peas look nice and bright and green. I mean for dehydrated and if you've never had dehydrated corn carrots and peas well then you might want to take a look at them, buy you some these are pretty much the way they should be and when did this one what's this well best if used by 30th of April 2022 so after next month it too will be passed it's best buy now, I already know what you're saying. You should always rotate. And that's a fact. Ain't no doubt. But sometimes things slip by. Yes, they do. And something I'll say right now. When you're looking at these here box goods, how long they last past the Best Buy has a lot to do with the storage temperature. Yes, it does. The cooler you can keep them, 
better off you'll be. The better the packaging. The longer they'll last. And these are just in cellophane plastic. But if you've ever dealt with spoiled pasta in a package, once it starts to go bad and is bad, these packages will start to blow up. Yeah. Because all part of that there uh, spoilage process produces gases. And I have lived it. I know that to be true. And this package, even though it is seven years and three months past its best buy, has yet to have that happen to it. It's nice, it's loose, it's looking the way it should. And of course this one's just fine. Another question you might be asking yourself is why would I consider eating this one over here that's seven years, three months past its best buy? And not this one that has yet to reach it. Well, next month it will. Well, this, you know, there's always a story in most of my videos. And there have been times in my life, yep, for different circumstances. Whether it was loss of a job because of a recession, or maybe because of a disabilitate, disabilitating accident, which has happened three times in my life, I might add that knocked me out of being able to work. Two of which knocked me out for quite a long period of time. Well, I was pretty broke and down on my luck. But whether it was because of a recession or job loss, and there has been a natural disaster or two thrown in there, things in the pantry got slim. Very slim. And when uh, it came time to eat, you open up the cupboards, you start digging, you start trying to find something edible. Now I'm not talking about didn't want to go shopping. No, I'm talking about <laughs> there was no money, period, to go shopping. And there have been those times in my life where I was blessed to find something that got stuck in the back, knocked down behind the shelf, or what have you. And you sort of kind of learn what you can eat and what you can't. And that one of those things you look for, like I say, is the packaging all puffed out. Yeah, sort of bloating. And that's a true telltale sign in these here box mixes. You know, other things to look for is discoloration. Well, these noodles look pretty much like they normally do. Surely they do. They may be just a touch darker than these over here. But the true test of want knowing whether this pasta is done went bad and the vegetable mix within it is to actually sniff it and smell it. Now, I can already tell you, dehydrated vegetables, since this did have atmosphere in it, i.e. oxygen, they will oxidize over time. And that's where they lose their color. Surely they do. Just like anything that oxidizes over time. So, the last test, whether this will be edible or not tonight, will be to give it a sniff test. And that's exactly what we're going to do right now. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to open up this bag of pasta. Surely we are. Got the scissors here. We're just going to snip it on open. Right there. And then, there's only one other thing to do. And that's stick my nose down in there to see what it smells like. And that's what we're going to do. Nope. Smells like pasta. In fact, hardly has any smell at all. Another thing to look at is your 
packet here, seasoning packet. Now, the saving grace here is, and you can see a little bit right there, it's in a Mylar package. Hey, that's about as good as it can get, unless it's in a number 10 can, which is exactly what y'all are sitting on right now from Augustine Farms. Yep, number 10 cans, my favorite form of packaging. There is no doubt for long term, and you happen to be on a can of dehydrated vegetable stew blend, by the way, just say. So, this ain't all poofy or bloated out either. So I'm gonna count it as good. Let's give it a whiff too, okay? We'll just cut it on open. Right like that. Bring it up to the old sniffer, which I can't see me on camera, but trust me, I'm gonna stick my nose in it. Nope. Smells just like seasoning. Hey, see? Look down in there. Looks just fine. So, we have to throw it out. And even though I do have that good one, I do believe in waste not, want not. So I'm going to go ahead and cook it up. And I'm going to throw in my other tasty veg. And I'm going to give it a taste test. Of course, I'll just say right now. If you're watching this video no old country engineer was harmed and I made it through just fine without any consequential problems <laughs> okay and that's a better shot of how dehydrated vegetables will discolor due to the process of oxidation it's a good thing being an engineer especially a process engineer you understand the process of all things. So, let me get ready to start cooking this up. And if you don't want to eat it with me, that's fine. I'll make up the other box just for you. Okay? Well, y'all, as you can see, we got that water in the old pot. A nice rapid boil. So we're going to take that macaroni and dehydrated vegetable mix. We're just going to dump it right on in there. Oh, yeah. Just like that. It's all so simple. I'll get a spoon and go ahead and uh, stir it around just a tad. Got one of my vintage wood spoons. Give it just a quick stir. And we're going to set a timer because the box said 8 to 10 minutes. So we're going to set it at 10 minutes. Yep. But what we're going to be doing on the last about oh, three minutes is we got to add our uh, veggies in there. Yeah, let me show them to you, okay? Now, what I did is I took those red ripe green bell peppers, gave them a fine chop, as well as I did those spring onions. Right there they are. Yep. And of course, we got our nice green peas right there. So we'll be adding those in the last three minutes. Then we'll have to drain it. And I like to let it cool a bit. You know, refrigerated air. Yeah. You know, it's funny. Back in the day, you know, my great grandmother, my grandma. You know, they were old enough to have an ice box. Yep. And they didn't like giving them up. In fact, I'll tell you a little secret. My daddy, he bought my great-grandmother up there in Johnsonburg, Pennsylvania, her very first refrigerator. Yep. Just so happened. It was one of them there Frigidaires. Yep. And back then, things were called by their names, brand names. Yeah, they were. Whether they actually, you know, were manufactured or not. Basically, back then, refrigerators were all called 
with Frigidaires. <laughs> but the one my daddy got for, you know, had that big rounded front. Yep, handle you pulled down. He didn't want to get inside one of them on the side of the street in the years to come when they were put out there, you know, when they went bad. But that'd be a long time, 20, 25 years. Things don't last that well anymore. No, they don't. Of course, manufacturers don't want them to last that long. Nope. They got sort of a engineered life cycle. Yep. Sadly, as an engineer, I was involved in that process too. You know, you can't make no money if everybody's refrigerator lasts a lifetime. But back then, that was not the case. So we're going to let that sit there and percolate and boil for seven minutes. And then we're going to start adding our veg. Surely we are. So y'all just watch that. And uh, I'll come back, throw in the veg, and continue the cooking process. And go from there. So y'all, it's been about three minutes left. And we're going to dump in those frozen green peas. Yep. Right there they are. And boy, they look colorful. Next is our finely diced red ripe bell pepper. And our spring onions. Get them all. Yep. Uh oh. Got a couple left. It goes back to that waste not want not, right? And all we're doing by doing that is giving them just a quick blanch. Yeah. The red bell pepper was in the freezer. So were those green sweet peas. No, I love peas. And you've seen me play up for many a dish where I had mashed potatoes. And hey, if you got mashed potatoes, you got to have green peas. Come on. Sort of kind of like you ain't American. The two just go hand in hand. At least they always did in my family. So we got that all going on. It's looking colorful. Woo, yeah. Sort of kind of looking like what was on the box. Now, if I'd had some carrots, which I did, I could have done, but I didn't. And hey, I'm sure I could have made it look just like it from the box. Now, I slap out of celery, so hey, and I do got dehydrated. But I'm not opening up a fresh number 10 can of dehydrated celery just for my pasta salad. Just saying. Well, the timer's going off. That means it's been a total of 10 minutes. Woo! That is looking colorful. Turn the heat off. Now we got to drain it. Yes, we do. And I always like to let mine cool some. Yes, I do. I leave it in the fridge a bit. Let it cool down a little bit. Before I start building my sauce mix, you know, with that seasoning package. Yeah and my spices. So let me get this drained. Get y'all set back up. And we'll go on from there. Okay? So y'all, we went ahead and let our macaroni chill down a little bit in the fridge. Why it is, we're going to go ahead and make up the dressing. Which is so simple. Read the box. It's a half a cup of mayo. Yep. And then you put in the seasoning mix. Which we're going to do right now. Sprinkle it on in there. And then just mix it up. Get out our calibrated mixer here. We're just going to give that all a good mix. Work that mix in really well. Of 
course, as always, I'll give it a little taste test just to make sure it doesn't need anything else. Tastes pretty flavorful. So now we're ready to add it to the macaroni and the veggies. So we'll just dump in our cooled macaroni mixture, which it, as it cools off, it gets to wanting to stick together. That's okay. We'll break it up a little bit. Throw in the dressing. Get all that goodness out. Smear it all over the top. And then it's just basically start mixing. And if you want it more creamy, then you just throw you in some more of your favorite mayo. I'm using the Dukes. That's my preferred brand now. Ever since I came upon it, when we came down here to the deep south. Give it a good mix. And if you know, as this sets up again in the fridge, of course it's nice and cool now, it may need some more mayo just to keep it nice and creamy. Yep, packed with flavor. Let me show it to you. There you have it. The finished dish. Woo, it is tasty. Convenient, fast. Yep, not to mention, seven years and three months old. So y'all, if you watch the video and all of that, understand. No little old country engineer was harmed or had any substantial or unsubstantial issues. It's still quite good to eat and tasty. Yep, it being that old, it probably lacks a little bit of nutritional value, I will say. And it'll still have the calories though. And so you can look all that up. So y'all. I'll leave a few links underneath the description of the video that you can read and see too how long pasta should last and how to go about checking it all out should you so desire. And like always, do your own research. Use your own judgment. You don't have to do it. But knowing what to do when a time comes that you might need to is a good thing and that's the whole point to the video so y'all take care stay safe and god bless each and every one of you as you bless others goodbye for now